You may remember a small series of videos I did covering how to make mortise and tenons with power tools, including using the router for making the mortise and the tenon, the dado stack, and even a hollow chisel mortiser attachment for the drill press. We're gonna continue that in this video by making this fairly simple loose tenoning jig, which will use a router to make the mortises and is compatible with Fez Tools Dominoes, the actual loose tenon stock. I'm using the router table here to cut the dados for the T-Track. I'm using the router table instead of a dado stack at the table saw because if I don't, the chances of somebody from Europe complaining rises by 58%. By routing both dados first, then cutting it in two, the two parts will match up perfectly later. By continuing the trend of not using the dado stack, a gigantic rebate is cut for the template holding area. Short lengths of T-Track are fitted to the slots. They act as runners, alignment tools, and the clamping mechanism. Using the jig for routing small parts safely I made a while ago, a very specific size slot can be routed in the template. Our target is for a 10mm mortise created using a 9.5mm bit using a 16mm guide bushing. This means the slot needs to be 16.5mm wide. The length is a little bit trickier. The standard width for any size domino is 13mm plus the diameter, so in our case we need a 23mm slot. For the template, that means it's 23mm plus the difference between the diameter of the bit and the diameter of the guide bushing. That's 23 plus 6.5, so we end up with a 29.5 wide hole in the template. Now is probably as good as any time to unpack what's actually going on here. This is a floating tenon jig or a router mortising jig and it, there's nothing particularly unique about it. They all have very similar designs to the ones that are out there. Some will uh, encapsulate the router with stops so that you slide pieces back and forth and it bumps into the edges stopping it from going further than what you want. They're nice and adjustable. Others will use a edge guide for the reference point uh, and that's also nice and adjustable. But the problem with both of these systems is that they're nice and adjustable, and that sounds a bit counterintuitive, I know, but if you are trying to very quickly do a standard type mortise, or floating tenon mortise, that adjustability can be a little bit irritating. And that's one of the things that is really great about the Domino. You do have some adjustability, but you also do 
have a narrow amount of adjustability. It's really, you set this one thing and you're done and you can do a thousand mortises like that and you don't have to touch anything. This jig, through the use of using a guide bushing on the router, allows you to swap in templates. These plywood templates mean that you can use different sized dominoes and that's the whole point of this. Using templates lets you use dominoes, lets you use pre-made materials. Why would you want to do that? Surely if you're buying the dominoes you'd already have a domino machine, right? Well, some people might see the dominoes uh, in a sustainer with all the bits and have intentions of buying a domino but can't afford it at the moment. High hue ball and just buy the dominoes themselves. This can also be a great technique if you don't want to make the dominoes yourself, having something commercially available means that you can run to the store, pick up some dominoes and then you're off to the races, so to speak. So at the moment, this jig has the regular 10 millimeter domino template installed. It's just screwed in. I'll replace that with bolts at some stage. We're still working on this. Still need to make the whole box for it to sit on. You can see that I've done a test cut to make sure the theory works and 10 millimeter domino works fits in just fine. It is very slightly loose uh, along the length. It doesn't matter so much. The glue surface is the important thing and it's just a hair looser than what I'd prefer, but it will, will actually work with glue. That's not an issue. The problem came from measuring the guide bushing and it was about 0.1 millimeter smaller than I thought. So all of my maths was off when I calculated the width of the template. From this point on, it's just about building a box to support the workpiece while it's being routed. I've braced myself enough for the onslaught of baguettes and such because I'm using the dado stack of the table saw to make very shallow dados to hold the box together. These help with alignment. Two deeper dados need to be cut for the T-track that's fully embedded this time around. These will act as the tracks for the adjustable fence. I've skipped ahead a little bit, but I'm pretty sure you can figure out how to do these things on your own. I've replaced the two wood screws with machine screws, which go into counterboard T-nuts. This allows the template to be replaceable very quickly with just an Allen key. I've also added a fence, which is just a piece of plywood with two holes in it for five, six inch bolts so that it can be secured with T-track bolts and star knobs. This allows you a nice square reference surface so that everything is actually aligned. Alternatively, if these had larger slots, you could angle it to do angled mortises. I've also added a T-track clamp. If you don't have a T-track clamp, you can use toggle clamps. Secure that, screw these onto the fence and then that'll secure your work piece. I'd probably recommend two of them. Uh, just will be nice and secure that way. The way you'd use this jig is we've got our workpiece. I've got a center line for where I want the center of the mortise. That lines up with the center line on this template. I advance that to roughly where I want it. I'd then secure my fence. It's already nice and secure. And bring my T-track clamp in, secure that. Take our router, use its guide bushing to cut the 10 millimeter mortise for the 10 millimeter domino. This jig is primarily for doing the end grain, but you can of course do the side grain as well. 
and you just load it in like this. You could make another sliding fence that butts up to give it a bit more repeatability if that's what you're after. Because of the way the templating system works, there's a gap between the workpiece here and the actual template. So you'll need to account for that by plunging an extra 12 millimeters. It may not be the ideal situation, but it's also not the end of the world. You really need to weigh up the benefits of using a template system versus maybe making another jig specific for those face grain uh, mortises. That's really up to you and what you find more annoying or more work. Alternatively, you could make the templates out of two pieces, perhaps gluing a 12 millimeter piece of plywood underneath, then routing out the templates so that they're always at the same depth. Finally, there's nothing that says you have to use dominoes for this. You can absolutely make your own loose tenon stock in any size you want. So you could make it the same width as your cutter. For example, in this case, we'd make it 9.5 millimeters or 3 eighths of an inch. Then when we need to make a mortise in the face grain, we just use the plunger router with an edge guide and we don't need this jig. This jig really excels at mortises in end grain. I'm sure there'll be some questions, so I want to preempt an FAQ and answer a few that I think people might have. First off, can I use a trim router? Yes, so long as your trim router is a plunge model and it can take a guide bushing. If your router can't take a guide bushing, make your own sub base like I did. You'll be limited to the depth that you can cut, but any size mortise will work because you're using a guide template to make wider than the bit mortises, so that's fine. What size dominoes can I use? Honestly, any of the sizes. You'll struggle a little bit with the Domino XL sized mortises just because of the plunge depth of your router. Can I buy one of these from you? Undetermined. Are there plans? Probably. Check the description below. Will you be using this all the time now? No, I've got a domino. Would you build it exactly the same if you were to do it again? Mostly the same. For the template, I'd probably look into using clear acrylic. That way you can see the workpiece a lot better. And if I was to make it again, I'd probably use the CNC because that just makes more sense because I have one of those. So now there's really no excuse for complaining when I use the festival domino because you can make your own. Thanks for watching.